Thanks for joining us tonight for um, our monthly core advocate webinar. Um, today we're going to be discussing how to design a school environment that supports students' needs for social, emotional, and academic um, development. And we're excited to have you tonight. We're actually going to start with a quick poll. And you can should you be able to just click right on your screen and um, identify how many webinars you have actually been able to attend for uh, Core Advocate monthly webinars, whether this is your first one to all the options, which are over 20. We're going to give you a minute to get those results in. We may have a few more responses um, coming in in a little bit, but right now it looks like we have a lot of uh, first-time attendees. Welcome. We're excited to have you. For those of you that are uh, returning to uh, uh, Core Advocate webinar, welcome back. We appreciate um, the, the time that you have spent with us. So this is really exciting to see that we are uh, reaching new um, new members in our network tonight. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm going to be doing the webinar tonight. My name is Astrid Fossum, and I'm a Senior Math Specialist at Student Achievement Partners. I work on the advisory support team, which primarily means that I am supporting states and districts and um, some of our SAP partner organizations in their work. And one of those partnerships, in fact, led to my participation in um, the creation of the resource that we're going to share tonight. And you can see the title of that down below on the slide, which is Integrating Social, Emotional, and Academic Development and how that's an action guide for school leadership teams. So this is especially important, um, this network slide up right now. For those of you that are new to our webinars, you may also be new to our um, our core advocate network itself. And whether you find tonight's webinar helpful, whether you'd like to just get more information, we'd like to invite you to join our core advocate network. Um, at SAP, we're committed to solving real problems that uh, real classroom teachers, principals, and coaches are experiencing. And we know that the best way to um, help solve those problems is to know more about what folks are experiencing um, in their buildings, in their districts, in their classrooms. So we'd love to hear more about who you are, um, where you work, the types of things you're interested in, and also the expertise that you have and hold. Um, this way we are able to really tailor our webinars and other opportunities that we have through our network so that they address your needs and interests. Um, we have had core advocates who have joined the network before um, partner in webinars with us and help pilot some work and really have um, become really great thought partners um, at our organization. So we can't talk enough about how much we love core advocates. And um, for those of you that have done the survey before, it's always nice to even go back in and update your, um, your information if it's been a while, and whether you've had a job change, a position change, or anything that you just want to let us know, um, please go into that for Advocate sign up um, and refresh or start a new and join our network there. Um, one of the things I will not be doing tonight is live tweeting because I don't have that many hands. Um, but for those of you that are tweeters, if you would like to tweet tonight through um, throughout the webinar, please use the hashtag core advocates. That is really the way that we um, reach most uh, people in our network um, as quickly as we possibly can. We also have a few of the handles listed down below. Our SAP handle is uh, at Achieve the Core. My handle is my name, Ostrid Fossum. Uh, we have the Aspen Ed Society from the Aspen Institute as well listed there. And then 
hashtags that I'm uh, another hashtag that I'm noticing um, more on Twitter right now when it comes to social emotional academic development is seed. Um, sometimes you also should see the hashtag um, SEL for social emotional learning. Either of those, and then I guess we have a little redundancy here with the hashtag core advocates again. But that is definitely the way to get to our SAP network. So tonight during the webinar, we hope that we are able to engage with us for the short time that we are together. Um, there are lots of ways that we can do that. Um, one is to use the group chat, which I see lots of people already saying hello and troubleshooting some of the technology. Um, that's a great uh, resource to um, introduce yourself to others on the call or share thoughts to the whole group. Um, later on, we are going to open up for questions, and if you would like to submit questions um, throughout the webinar, there's going, there should be a Q&A tab down below. Um, the chat is the blue icon with the chat bubbles. The Q&A probably has a question mark in it. Um, those would be at the bottom of your screen. I actually had to scroll down on my screen to find all of those options, so you might have to do that as well. Um, and then there are some resource links and articles mentioned on the webinar, those are going to be in the resource tab. After the webinar, you're going to receive a link to access the on-demand video, I mean on-demand version of the recording. Then you can check your email in two weeks and there will be a survey um, about whether you found the content on the webinar useful. And when you complete that survey, for those of you that are interested in verification of professional learning hours, completing that survey will be the way that you will um, generate a customized completion certificate. So the goals for tonight's uh, webinar, we have three main goals, and they are to understand the interrelatedness of academics to social emotional learning essentially how SEL or social emotional learning connects to social emotional academic development. Secondly, to learn about this uh, new resource I already mentioned that has been created to help educators think about creating an empowering, respectful, and safe school environment. And then we're going to examine some principles of social emotional and academic development and think about how they can be woven into the daily fabric of schools. So we're going to briefly examine and dig into this first question, how do we incorporate social emotional learning into academic development um, in our time together? And we have a second poll here for you to um, quickly read through the responses, but the question is to, does your school or district currently engage in social emotional learning initiatives? If yes, to what degree do the initiatives blend with academic instruction? So there are, I believe, four options down below for you to click and then submit. Um, so we're going to start by finding out where you are currently with SEL initiatives, and I'll give us a minute to Think about the response, put it in, and then um, switch to the next slide so we can see the results. So right now it looks like we're pretty even across the board in the um, first three options, a smaller percentage there with the 
there being already a seamless approach to social emotional learning and academic initiatives within the school. Um, but we have a range from no, we haven't really begun this work to um, they're separate. There's inconsistency, and we're seeing a little bit less where there is um, kind of nice cohesion between SEL and academics at this point. So this is perfectly placed. And what we're seeing in schools and through my experience over the course of the year is um, I've heard some of these messages that have kind of come up, all really valid concerns. Right? I don't have time to teach the FBL program. How do I fit it all in? Valid concern about um, time constraints. Valid concerns about implementation. How do I even do this? FBL isn't my content. Right? I feel like that might have been something that would have come out of my mouth years ago as a, um, as a middle school math teacher. Um, questions about implementation. What do we do? How do we even do this? Where do we begin? Um, and then kind of moving to questions, too, depending on where people are and probably from some of our um, poll results about how do we really keep this momentum going? You know, the kids had such a great time working together today. Maybe we see, like, really great opportunities where students um, are problem-solving and struggling together and working through some of those initiatives. But the question is, what can we do to maintain this high level of engagement in the classes? So I think that we're trying, we're really moving away from um, these two sides, right? We have the sides of academics, we have the sides of SEL, and they maybe historically have been a little bit at odds with one another. When we sit down and really thought about this guide, it became clear that we were thinking about creating um, a classroom and school culture where academics and social emotional skills were both important and how those, um, how those play out in the school environment and what adults can do as well in that situation. So we hope that this webinar and the tool that will be shared will help support educators um, with the implementation for success of all learners and that maybe some of these um, phrases here on this, these slides will kind of be reframed over the next course of the next year or as you work through implementing some of the suggestions um, within this guidebook itself. Um, the graphics that are coming up are uh, from an excerpt from the National Commission on Social, Emotional, and Academic Developments Report, which was from a nation at risk to a nation of hope. And that was published at the very beginning of 2019, also from the Aspen Institute. And schools really contribute to students developing social emotional skills, and those are critical to success in school and career and life. What we have here with these graphics above are the cognitive skills um, that go that are that go into play. So I mean, setting goals, seeing some of those, we see those in classrooms, learning intentions, success criteria that are up for students and and teachers, problem solving, part of those cognitive skills and competencies, productive struggle, the the lift of. Um, the cognitive lift that's on students during the class in the classroom and during lessons. We also see examples in um, social and interpersonal skills, um, cooperation, group work, um, the discourse and the response from student to student and student to teacher, and how classroom discussion around um, difficult topics or uh, novels, anything is really coming to play. Um, in those social and interpersonal competencies. And then there's also an emotional piece to this as well. Um, really that classroom dynamic with new uh, content even, understanding emotions and perspectives of others, understanding and demonstrating empathy toward our fellow classmates and learners. Um, so all of those definitely are in play in the schoolhouse. And we know that academic instruction is one of the ways to create an ideal context for practicing these broader competencies and skills. Uh, and the research is, validates that as important to success beyond school. The 
we know our students need support with the competencies. Um, we're going to take a little time now to dig into where we can begin as a school team. The guidebook itself uh, was a new publication released from the Aspen Institute in partnership with the organizations listed below. You'll see student achievement partners listed there as well as um, other organizations that contributed to co-authoring the document. Um, it's available if you even if you just Google the title or um, Aspen Institute Action Guide, it will come up in your Google search and the PDF is free and downloadable right there on their website. Um, some of the design principles that went into this as we were meeting is that we wanted this to be an actionable guide. Something that came off the shelf or or, you know, was bookmarked and referred to like it's easy to implement their ideas in here. Maybe not all of them that apply to my school setting, but there are things that I can glean as a school leader, as a teacher, as a member of the um, school leadership team, anything that is I could be able to pull from this and get some ideas. All research based and and also probably like a little at a time with some um, real examples. This is also um, you're going to hear a lot of collective language throughout the document when you go in and read it after the uh, webinar is over about collaboration and how this work really is falling on a team and not um, so much just to one person. So really thinking about how to establish that team and who are going to be the people in your building, um, in your district, in your own setting that can uh, work to integrating social, emotional, and academic development. Within the guide itself, there are five sections. They're all two pages. So this also isn't a document um, that, which I should have alluded to earlier, another design principle, that it wasn't going to be something that in and of itself it would take up a whole row on a bookshelf, right? It's, it's a manageable um, uh, sections two pages each for vision of student success, student learning experience, adult learning in support of student success, because we know as adults we have much to learn when it comes to supporting our students still, and uh, learning environment, school climate, and then asset mapping. Um, I would suggest actually reading through um, those five sections before you decide where to begin. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a linear fashion. Um, so you just would peruse through those five and then see um, where there might be places for your setting where you might start. Within each section, you're going to find foundational research. So in support of the section, uh, equity implications for each of those sections, guiding questions, which can really get at um, the discussion, and then high impact actions. So I was talking about some suggestions. I guess I would say those are actions that you'd see there. Additionally, there are um, also vignettes included in the um, after these sections of the document. And those are really meant to illustrate what uh, social, emotional, academic development looks like in action. Um, and there are curated resources um, in the document after the vignette that support deeper exploration of the issues and opportunities. So um, you'll see the research base coming in there as well. These are examples um, coming up now from a few of the different sections, actually. Um, so what does the research say and comes from the vision of student success um, section? The Equity implications is actually coming from the asset mapping section, which um, you'll see is that resource equity does not mean that every student gets the exact same thing. And then there's, you know, kind of a bold statement followed by a little bit more of a descriptor or a secondary question if the section is um, in question format. And those, those two sections, what does the research say and the equity implications really are um, meant to be more informative and definitely fodder for conversation. Um, the guiding questions also are meant for that. The guiding question on the slide 
there is pulled from the adult learning in support of student success. And those are really meant to be a time, questions to ask oneself in a reflective manner to open up for discussion, um, again, on a school leadership team in PLCs or as a whole staff. Um, but they're, they're definitely um, good, to, good questions to think of as kind of launching points. And then that's followed by high impact action. The clip there happens to be from the student learning experience. But the high impact actions are meant to be ideas for implementation. Um, the bottom example is pulled from um, one of the vignettes. And that's an excerpt about grade level planning and actually reallocating staff meeting time. Um, and that was pulled from one of those vignettes in the back of the book or guide. Um, everything in there isn't meant to be, you know, an exhaustive list. As we said, there are, um, there, there are resources pulled from um, that are included within in the back of the um, guide as well. Um, so there are definitely ideas to think about, and this can serve as a starting point. So for those of you that are familiar with um, Student Achievement Partners already, you'll know about our three-legged stool uh, for the three mathematical aspects of rigor. Um, but this is, this is within the introduction of the seed guide, and we met, this is now a three-legged stool for actually enacting social, emotional, and academic development. Um, all three of these pieces of the pie being um, really important here, teaching and practicing social, emotional, and cognitive skills, embedding those skills in academic learning, and having a safe and uh, relationship-based um, and equitable learning environment. So SEED actually requires uh, rethinking the school experience for students and adults so that the social, emotional, and academic dimensions of learning um, are mutual and they are reinforced in practice and infused into aspects of the school and student experience. Enacting SEED rests um, underneath this three-legged stool so that the students need each of these three. And addressing social, emotional, and academic development as an integrated approach um, will really help you move from a siloed initiative. You know, some of those concerns that were up before and, you know, probably some of the concerns that in places that have brought you to the webinar tonight itself. Um, moving from that siloed idea or kind of like an add-on program to really addressing social, emotional, and academic um, dimensions of learning together because we know that those are linked in a student school experience. Um, in support of the document, we have a couple of additional links for you to think about, um, and you can read one. With, these are both um, short blog posts that are written um, for the Aligned blog from SAP, and the first is written um, by me, Social Emotional Learning and Academic Content, Kind of a Natural Caring, and that's going to be um, addressing some of our questions before about how to really have a seamless approach between um, social emotional aspects as well as academics. And then Rochelle Etienne has um, written, she's also a co-author of the document, both of us from SAP, a blog post about designing a holistic learning experience. Um, great read, um, really telling the tale a little bit more of the human experience. So it's, um, those are both definitely worth the time, kind of additional vignettes for you to uh, look to as resources. So we want to give you a minute to um, use the group chat so that we can all see those responses for how you are thinking you might be able to bring this um, guidebook back to your school or district. So we'll let those come in for a minute um, and we can read through them and get more ideas from the whole group.
okay, now I might need to hit refresh. But I'm scared to do it. <laughs> oh, my group chat is not refreshing. Try one more thing. I think I'm going to move on for right now because I'm unable to see anything coming in in the group chat. Um, hopefully there are some ideas that I am the only one that can actually not see that, but those should be able to be um, recorded in, um, in the link that you'll get afterwards. Uh, some of the things that I've been in conversation about, um, hopefully really sharing with the leadership team, um, sharing with teams. I think it's an important um, consideration with like TBIS teams um, and those initiatives are really about behavior. And so have engaging in the conversation about what's um, compatible, similar and different between those with your PLC, with your principal. Um, and, you know, I think that that may help a little bit with issues of, like, teacher buy-in. Um, as I said before, I was a, a, I was a content teacher, right? I would have had real concerns about how do I do this? Um, am I doing this at expense of my content? I think when we have really great instructional materials and opportunities for students to engage with the content in facilitated ways by the teachers, um, and then you'll see some of these competencies and skills that were addressed in the cognitive and the social and the emotional pieces um, coming into life and sometimes seeing is believing um, ways that really help um, reframe um, the conversation that's happening around the good things that we see um, happening in our classrooms when students are working together and working um, through some of the social emotional needs. So we're going to quickly go into the question. Is there a guide, um, an, in, an extra guide? I'm not sure if there is there. There's a question about what works and what doesn't work. Um, I haven't seen anything like that. Um, I wonder if, you know, I'm happy to field additional questions beyond tonight, too. It, it feels like there's not enough time. I've never done a half an hour webinar before, and we're kind of near the end. Um, but feel free to follow up directly with me. I'm happy to really answer any lingering questions. Um, there's really, there are so many coming in that are great about how um, social emotional learning isn't just for students. There is that one piece about um, the one section about um, addressing adult needs as well. And I am really resonating here with a question and a statement that someone said about how FBL affects adults as well. Um, and and how there may be needs to tailor for veteran versus um, novice teachers. So please feel free to follow up. Um, and feel free to, and please do join us in our um, social media. We have Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest that you could all follow us on. Please join the um, network as well. Um, we can put some resources as they're coming across them into core advocate Net, um, newsletters, which is a way and a resource that you get would get monthly if you joined the network as well. As a reminder, you'd be getting tonight's recording um, and a survey about tonight so to complete in order to get those professional learning um, hours and verification. There is also uh, next month's webinar, which is the most uh, misunderstood math standards in K-8. That is um, on August 7th. So we are out of time. Thank you for all of you that 
stayed on um, a little bit of a minute over. Uh, we hope to see you again on another webinar. And I, I uh, email address is on our Choose the Core dot org um, webpage. Please feel free to follow up with anything that didn't get answered tonight. Thanks so much. <laughs>